Okay, so this next video is about um, creating textures with different color combinations. And these color, these textures that I am demonstrating can work to mimic some different types of like foliage, water, um, like fields, tree trunks, etc. So um, these textures and techniques, um, just like the ones in the last set of videos that you did um, for yesterday, uh, can be adapted as they need to be for a subject that you choose to put in the landscape that you're going to be creating for our Impressionism project. Okay. Okay. If you have a ruler, you can use that to trace these long rectangular columns. You can use white drawing paper or uh, white computer paper is fine. Your columns should be about an inch high and then about like nine to 10 inches long. Uh, that's all approximate. And you just want to trace around the ruler three times to make three of those long skinny rectangles. Okay, I'm not going to require you to label these. Um, you certainly could if you want to label these. Uh, this first one we're going to be using um, feathering uh, with kind of like a broken color application. And we're going to be working from uh, the complements with green and red over to the left. Um, and kind of working that towards more like a variety of greens and then kind of yellow green. Uh, just to give you some different uh, ways to create mixtures with green to create like shadow tones maybe in trees or in like mountains. Um, or like grassy hills to um, highlight areas where like the sun is bouncing off of leaves. So what I did was I took my set of pastels and I pulled out um, the greens that I have in my set and then I pulled out the red and then I also pulled out the yellows. So I have um, kind of like two of um, each of the greens and the yellows. Okay and I'm going to start actually by putting some red over here and so I'm just going to kind of do almost like a zigzaggy kind of feel with um, broken color and kind of um, feathering. So I'm kind of adapting this a bit. And then I'm gonna have that kind of fade out. Okay. Into that, I'm gonna add the green. I'm gonna start with my darker green. If you have a darker green, then go with that over top. And I'm gonna use that more heavily towards the left. I'm kind of creating like a range of value in this technique. And then I'm gonna have it kind of dissipate as it gets to the right. Then I'm going to go ahead and use my more like green, green, you know, the other one was kind of olivey in there. And I want that to kind of be more of the dominant tone that I use, um, especially as I go to the right. And then that's going to get carried through much, much further dissipating um, less marks, lighter marks as it gets to the right. And then if I feel at all like there's like too much of that color, I can always work back in with my red. I can always work back in with my olive green too to kind of change it up a bit. All right, and then I'm gonna go in with my yellows. And the yellow mixed in with the green is really going to change that green a lot. Okay, and this is kind of the more like darker cadmium yellow, which really changes that green. But I just want to see like a gradual shift from like the shadow tones with a lot of the complementary red mixed in. Um, to more of like a highlight feel with more of the analogous colors of green, yellow, green, and yellow. Okay, and then I'm kind of coming from the right here with this yellow green. Okay, and so I am putting the light color on top. You'll see how that really mixes things around. It kind of pulls it together a little bit more. Um, it makes it feel a lot more painterly. kind of shuffle my strokes around a little bit to kind of get that feel. And so that gives you a range of colors that you can use in one subject um, that is green, that has texture um, to create shadows and highlights where um, the sun is hitting it.
Okay, this next um, technique is really um, just feathering. And so I'm gonna be using my darkest blues and my violet over to the left and then feather that into the lighter blues that I have all the way over to um, white. And so this can work for water. Sometimes it can work for like distant mountains where there's like some atmospheric perspective as well. I'm actually gonna start with the darker blue because it is darker than the violet that I have. Um, but I do wanna put some violet in there because that kind of makes, you know, your nice like purple mountains majesty color um, if you choose to use this for um, a uh, you know some mountains out in the distance okay and so I'm gonna feather this in going heavily over here and then kind of lessening the pressure as I get to the right then I'm gonna go in with my violet over top Let me make that nice dark violet color and then kind of feather that into my next blue. And come in here. Okay. And so the feathering, we want it to be gradual, but not so gradual that you're like blending. You should not be blending with a paper towel in this area. Um, and certainly if you need to revisit it to make it look more gradual, you can. You can always go back and color it with colors and overlap them and then overlap them again. Um, but it's important to know that like, it's not meant to look super blended with like a paper towel or tissue. Um, I know that's something that's like really like, um, I don't know, like tempting to do with a soft pastel because it is so like chalky and it can be blended to be so smooth, but our project is about impressionism and impressionism is about um, visual brush strokes. So, um, so we don't want to do that. We don't want to over blend things. Okay, and then I have this other light blue I'm gonna work in here. And so the lighter colors you might need to clean with a, um, you know, a tissue or a paper towel kind of between using them. And then I need to um, fade my white in here too. So you want to blend kind of more with the white and the lighter colors over top. Um, you do not want to blend with a paper towel. It's really, really important. Okay, and you should have something that's like that. Um, and if you see a spot that it needs to be retouched, you can always go back and kind of work back into it. This last technique is nice for like tree trunks uh, or like kind of like fall field colors. Uh, this is gonna be all feathering too. You can certainly take these same colors and do like a feathering um, broken color technique like we did up here uh, and that will uh, make it look like leaves on a tree. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start with the dark blue um, because that helps me to get a nice dark value. Um, when I need a darker value, I'm gonna go to my dark blue. I'm never gonna go to my black um, because black is not a color made in nature. It's a man-made color and the impressionists didn't use black at all. So we're not going to use it either. Okay, then after that, I'm gonna jump to brown. Okay. And so I am going to kind of put the brown in with my dark blue. You can always go back and add more dark blue too. And then I'm going to go to my red, kind of feather that in there. Then I'm gonna feather in my orange. If things start to get muddy, you can always just tap your paper off in the trash to get kind of like dust away. Okay, and then I have this like more of a cadmium yellow I'm gonna use. You might just have just yellow and that's okay. You can just go to that. And then I have like a lemon yellow, which I'm gonna use as my last one and that's gonna get feathered back into the left. 
because the light colors are going to be nice to blend with. Okay, then I want to tap the dust off of it. I want to photograph it and then upload it for the assignment.